This is going to be a study about the pride of old and young men. In Proverbs twenty twenty nine, it says, The glory of young men is their strength, and the beauty of old men is the gray head. There is a problem you see today, though. It is everywhere you look. The young man's strong suit is supposed to be his strength. The old man's strong suit should be his wisdom. The problem is that the young men don't have or don't use their strength, and the old men have gotten old with no wisdom to show for their gray head. The young man wants to tell the old man what to do because he thinks he is wise above his years. The old man doesn't impart any wisdom to the young man. The old man spends all of his time living in past victories and trying to tell the young man how much harder that he had it when he was his age. The old man is trying to continue to glory in the strength that he once had that he no longer has anymore. The young man is trying to give wisdom to the old man that he hasn't even had time to obtain yet. The old man needs to quit living in the past and start using his old man muscles. And that's not his biceps. That is, he should use his wisdom. Ecclesiastes 7.19 says, Wisdom strengtheneth the wise more than ten mighty men which are in the city. Wisdom is actually better than strength anyways. You can't keep your muscles, but you can retain wisdom until you die. I'm certainly not old enough to have obtained a great amount of wisdom as someone who was in their 60s and lived 30 years as a King James Bible believer. It's not my place to tell an older Christian what to do unless they ask me. It's not my place to tell an old lost man what to do outside of giving him the gospel. For example, a man who was in his 50s and 20-something years older than me said, Why are you reading a King James Bible? You know they make the Bible in English now, right? But I didn't rebuke him. I didn't correct him. I just said, I believe the King James Bible is the Word of God. He's old enough to know better. Most times they are old enough to be set in their ways, and it's not my place to give unsought advice to a much older Christian. Not only has the man been saved longer, but he's lived much longer. It's not my place to give him wisdom. He let wisdom pass him by as he was wasting the gift of time. You don't want to get up in your 60s and 70s without any wisdom to give to young people. A lot of older men will spend all their time <clears throat> talking about how hard they had it, how tough they were, how brave and strong they were. They talk down to the younger guys like they have it easy, which maybe they do, but how does this impart wisdom to the younger man? How can this perfect the younger man? The truth is the old men with wisdom are few and far between and they have to continue to live in the glory days when they had all those past victories. But Joel 1-2 says, Hear this, ye old men, and give ear, all ye inhabitants of the land. Hath this been in the, your days or even in the days of your fathers? Tell ye your children of it and let your children tell their children and their children another generation. Joel has to say, hear this, ye old men. The truth is that even if you're up in your 60s, it isn't too late for you to get wisdom. James 1, 5 says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. I hate the, thinking, uh, the way of thinking that says, I'm too old now. Even if you're 65 and you just retired, you could live to be 80, and I mean, if you start now, that gives you 15 years walking with the Lord in the Scriptures. You could learn more Bible than any Christian on this planet in 15 years. You just have to want to. If you're 60 and you live up into your 70s, that gives you 10 plus years of getting on fire for God as a prayer warrior. Anyone can pray. If you're up in your 60s and you never read the Bible, start now. If you read it once a year, you could still read it 10 plus times before you leave this world, most likely. You can still get wisdom. There are still some old men with wisdom, and not just worldly wisdom, but biblical wisdom. And these are men you should listen to as a young person. Don't think that you know more than the old man. 1 Kings 12, 6-8 says, <clears throat> it shows us this story. It says, And King Rehoboam consulted with the old men that stood before Solomon his father while he yet lived, and said, How do you advise that I may answer this people? And they spake unto him, saying, 
If thou wilt be a servant unto this people this day, and wilt serve them, and answer them, and speak good words to them, then they will be thy servants forever. But he forsook the counsel of the old men, which they had given him, and consulted with the young men that were grown up with him, and which stood before him. So Rehoboam ended up with the kingdom split, because he forsook the counsel of the old men. You need to listen to the old men that are giving biblical counsel. Your dad, you dads out there, you need to be training up your child in the way he should go. Because Proverbs seventeen six says, Children's children are the crown of old men, and the glory of children are their fathers. So your children and grandchildren that are successful in the Lord will turn out to be your crown. That's why it's stupid when a, a parent, parents will actually get jealous of the success of their child. But if you raised him, that's also your accomplishment. Your children are your crown. I work with a lot of people that's about 8 to 10 years younger than me. But then I work with a lot of people that's 20 to 30 years older than me. And I notice the young men think they know so much more than the old men. They tell the old men what to do. I train a lot of people on my job and the trainees come in and they try to show me a better way to do it. Even though I've been there for a, four years now, and these people just started. People are unteachable the, these days. They think they are privileged. They think that they need to be your boss and have the benefits there of someone who has worked at the plant for 30 years. When I work with the older men who are old enough to be my father, I mean, I treat them as if they were. Even if I don't exactly agree with what they're saying, my job's to work. My job's not to give somebody orders that's got all this seniority and age over me and experience. And 1 Timothy 5 1 says, Rebuke not an elder, but entreat him as a father, and the younger men as brethren. Most times you only hear the phrase, Respect your elders. But the Bible teaches to also treat the young men right. The young men shouldn't look down on the old men, and the old men shouldn't look down on the young men. Leviticus 19.32 says, Thou shalt rise up before the hoary head and honor the face of the old man. And fear thy God, I am the Lord. A lot of times the young guys will sit and make fun of the older man because of his age. While it all might be fun and games and teasing, it comes off a bit disrespectful. Because it's not, it's not a bad thing to become old. That's actually a good thing. Whether the old man has gathered any wisdom over the years or not, he is still full of years. He's been through a lot of troubles by that point in his life. And he has earned the right for some respect for that reason. If a man has put in 30 plus years at a factory and the young guy comes in off the street, the old man has the seniority factor. He has the age factor. He's got the experience factor. He should be first in line to make the decisions. The young men need to know their place. When I'm working with someone a lot older, especially if they've been there longer, I follow their lead. You don't want to be unteachable. You don't want to these people that can't submit to any type of authority. That's why you can't hold down a job. You want to be your own boss all the time. But you start on the bottom and you work your way up. You start as a young man. One day you'll be the old man. Now there are occasions where I train a new person who's a lot older. And in that situation, they have to listen to me. But it can still be done in, an, in a respectful manner. As a young man, your strength is your physical strength. Wisdom is better than physical strength. That is the strength of the old man, especially if he's redeemed his time. While you're young, you need to be building this wisdom. It says in Ecclesiastes 12.1, Remember now thy Creator in the days of thy youth. In Proverbs 4, 7, it says, Wisdom is the principal thing, therefore get with them wisdom, and with all thy getting, get understanding. If you're not learning and asking God for wisdom, then you're just getting dumber consistently. You're going to be dumb and dumber. Your mind is constantly forgetting, so you need to be constantly learning. And if you use your time wisely now, then when you're up in your 60s, then you can give the young man biblical wisdom. Not the... Well, back when I was young, we did this and this and this, and you kids are lazy nowadays. That is a pride fest that's not helping anybody. When you sit and brag about past accomplishments, 
when I oh, when I hear an old man bragging about the past and how tough he used to have it and how you don't have it tough and how you're worthless compared to his generation, that is not wisdom. That's pride. That's the pride of the old man. Even though you're older, try to never stop using your physical strength either. You'll never be like you were as a young man, but if you don't use your strength after you retire, then it will be less opportunity for you to get around to impart any wisdom to somebody. You'll be bedridden when you get further up in age. Even though physical strength is no longer your real strength, your true strength, it doesn't mean it should be neglected. Bodily exercise profiteth little, Paul says in 1 Timothy 4, eight, but it does profit a little bit. Job 26, 3 through 4 says, How hast thou counseled him that hath no wisdom? And how hast thou plentifully declared the thing as it is? To whom hast thou uttered words, and whose spirit came from thee? When you get to the judgment seat of Christ, I believe one of the questions will be, How hast thou counseled him that hath no wisdom? Once I heard a much older woman telling a younger girl to never get married. She said, It's the worst decision of your life. This crazy woman said this to the girl that I married. Uh, that was horrible advice. Just because you married an idiot doesn't mean she's going to marry an idiot. That's bad wisdom. I've heard a lot of older people say, never have children. They'll come at a young person and tell them to never have children. That's bad wisdom. I've heard older people influence the younger person to get a divorce. Once again, bad wisdom. It seems like the wisdom that the older people are giving out many times today is bad wisdom. That's because all these years, through their 20s, they lived it up. Through their 30s, they lived it up. Through all these young years in their 40s, they lived it up. Early 50s, they lived it up. Then they maybe they finally slow down, but they're bitter because they lived it up. Their life's in a mess. They've had a couple bad marriages. Their kids have went down the drain. Now they go to the young generation and say, don't get married. Don't have children. I wish I'd have never got married had children. No, you should have mar never married the wrong person. And you should have trained your children right. And things would have turned out a lot better. You shouldn't have lived it up. You need to spend your young years, when you got all this physical strength, putting wisdom in you, putting knowledge in you with the scriptures. Then, when you're the old man, you can give wisdom to other people.